looks like. Okay, so YouTube says you are live. Thank you, YouTube, for the confirmation. That's really kind of you. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm Cece from CC Restyled, and I'm a furniture artist in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm also a designer influencer for Redesign with Prima. Um, Redesign with Prima, um, they produce the DIY products that are, in my opinion, they're the most... I don't want to say cutting edge, but more imaginative. They're not your cookie cutter everyday um, products to use on, you know, your home decor, your furniture, or whatever you can imagine, you know, you want to jazz up around the house, um, your projects. Um, I've used uh, the products for just about everything under the sun <laughs> that you can think of, but um, that's fun for me. So today is a special day. It's a um, full reveal day for the latest release of Redesign with Prima's um, line. Um, and I happen to have some items in the release as part of my designer line. And that's really exciting um, because products are really exciting. So I'm going to show you a few of those. And I'm going to give you a quick rundown on one of the new products that I haven't really gotten into. Um, we did some sneak peeks and showed little bits of the products on um, social medias. But I didn't really get into these too much. And um, they're pretty cool. One of my favorite products from the, uh, the new releases. Um, part of my designer line is the knob molds. Knob molds. It's kind of hard to say ten times fast. Knob mold, knob mold, knob mold, knob mold. Knob molds. Okay, so these are molds. You can use silicone. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, you can't use silicone. They're made of silicone. Um, you can cast them with uh, quick setting resin, um, regular epoxy, cement, clay, hot glue if you were really feeling kind of funky that day. But, you know, anything that you can cast and will remain rigid after it's cast, you can make a knob out of. There's four different designs. Um, I will show you those. Let's see. So basically, it's this mold. Okay, this one is called, um, what is this one called? <clears throat> There's four of them and I'm not so great with names, but um, Lux Ornate. So Lux Ornate, uh, you can kind of see it here on the package and you can also see it in my hand. Oh, look, it's like storytelling time. YouTube, Facebook, okay, next page. Um, it's called Lux Ornate, because look around the edge, that perimeter has got all that neat little, um, you know, the detail work, so that you can, you know, use your gilding wax, you can use uh, whatever you want to make it sparkly or stand out, glazes, waxes, leaf, you know, all of those things. The metallic leaf looks really cool on these. Um, that was one. And they come with these little hardware jobbies, okay, the little threaded posts. Um, there's a method to applying these or inserting them into your, your cast knob. There's a couple of other ways to do it as well, and um, I'll show you those or at least explain them to you because there's more than one way to skin a cat. But it does come with four sets of these, so you can at least make more four knobs off the, you know, off the bat. <clears throat> um, the next one would be Regal Aura. This one's a little simpler. And the reason why I wanted these semi-simple, because I wanted you to, you to be able to cast them as is, and they'd be nice and um, classic, you know, clean, simple knob. See how it's just got the, um, wait, <laughs> wrong one. See how it's just got the bevel around the edge, like it's kind of a domed shape and it's got the bevel around the edge. So you could just cast this in one color and it would work great. Um, you could also add glitters, micas, um, gold leaf. I've put anything you can name in, you know, a mold before I put fake sprinkles and fake all kinds of stuff. For whatever theme your project is, you can make it custom and you can make it over and over and over and over again. That's a good thing about molds is that it's not one and done. You can continue to make these for as long as the life of the silicone mold is. And you know, that could be forever unless you're crazy like me and I you rip it apart, but that's not easy to do, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not the most graceful person when I'm making stuff. It's like, um, but that would be, <clears throat> Let's see, that would be Regal Aura. And I do have examples of these finished out. This one would be Regal Aura. What I did here, and I'll show you how to do this today if we have time, which we should, because it's pretty quick. Um, I poured the, the whole thing in clear epoxy, or at least that center part. I found it works better if you pour the whole thing instead of trying to do it in two parts. Because originally I poured a little bit in the center of the mold, you know, pour just enough to fill in that middle section. And then I filled the rest in with um, quick setting because I was being impatient. But I have some examples where I filled the whole thing with the clear, that's with the, some glitter in it. And then I gold leaf around the edges, okay? To give it like that kind of glow through it, you know? So you can kind of see 
It looks almost like a stone, like a natural stone, doesn't it? Pretty neat. And it's a lot of fun too. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of fun. It's just fun. And okay, so that was two of them. What was the other one? Pearl Inlay. Pearl Inlay is, this one might be one of my favorites, these last two. I mean, I like them all, but um, they have the beadwork around the edges. So Pearl Inlay, where are you Pearl Inlay? Come on down, this one. So see how it's got the beadwork on the edges or faux beadwork? I love that. That's my favorite detail because it's enough to be, um, it's enough to give it some character and some places to add like sparkle or glaze or anything like that, some detail. But it's also still simple. It's still, you know, it's not overboard. It's still pretty simple if you want it to be. That's why I love these with the beadwork around them so much. Um, so what you do is you pour your mold, okay, with let's just say we're using resin or epoxy. Pour it almost all the way to the top. Okay, there's almost a little line around the top, but I don't think it's intentionally supposed to be there, but see that around the top? It's kind of like a little, little, um, almost a line, but it's not quite a line. Almost to the top, like you would if you're gonna still put creamer in your coffee or sugar or something, if you like normal amounts of creamer sugar. And then um, <clears throat> there's this little, the back part, the back piece it comes with. This little guy, it's like cap, right? Just put his little lid on him. Um, but you want to put your little post, um, it's, it's, I call it a sleeve. It's kind of like just a little insert or, um, if you're talking in, you know, hardware, it's, it's the female part and then the post would be the male part and that comes in later, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> that comes in when you're getting ready to, you know, put it on your piece of furniture or whatever project you're working on. But you just stick the little part right there, the little, um, adapter thing or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. And then put, put your little top on and it just suspends there while it sets up. Then you can peel it all away and uh, you got your knob ready to do all the fun things too. So I happen to have an example or three right here. Okay, so let's pretend like we just did what I said and we filled this up part of the way. Then we put our little sleeve on the little holder. Okay, and then it's set up overnight and this is what we've got. Okay, so see how it... um. <clears throat> you can still see the hole it's accessible and the little threaded post it will still go right on in there okay so that's how you attach them I did want to tell you um, you know some people aren't a fan of that method necessarily there's always going to be preferences on different ways to skin the cat right um, if you're handy at all or you have a person around the house who is you know, a significant other, roommate, whatever, um, and they have a drill, you can always just pour your mold, let it set up flat, and then take a drill and do maybe like an eighth inch um, drill hole in the back, however long you need for your post, which will differ depending on what you're putting it on, right? You'll need a shorter or longer post. Um, and then there's also just the threaded posts that they don't have a head like this, okay? See how the ones that come with it, most of these um, furniture um, screws have a head on them, right? Phillips usually, but some old ones have a lot of flat heads, which don't get me started on flat head. <laughs> like, what's the point? Um, but if, if that method is easier for you, or once you've used these all up and you are in a pinch and you don't want to go out and try to find some more, you can always just drill, you know, a hole, assuming you or your, whoever's drilling a hole for you can just do a little straight, you know, and then you can just choo -choo -choo it in there right okay so there's a couple of other different ways but they're more specific and I'll do some videos showing how because you know you got to have variety right like not everyone wants not everyone fits the same mold am I right that was a good one I don't care so <clears throat> got that done now we're just gonna peel it away you want to be gentle I mean they're not like fragile by any means they're silicone but um, you don't need to just rip it off. You just want to kind of peel away at it slowly. Normally I would have it on the table doing this, but I'm trying to show you at the same time. YouTube's got a really weird view of my ceiling. <clears throat> um, let's see. Oh, smaller. I, I don't personally have plans for smaller ones only because this is about as small as I think most people want to be finicky with with their fingers. Um, it's, it's, it's not that they're super fiddly, but, um, they can be, if you're like me and you're clumsy anyways, it's kind of hard to, um, 
you know, if it was any smaller, I'm not sure how I would fit um, anything in there, but I do have a solution for that. So if you are wanting to make smaller molds like things for jewelry boxes, Linda asked about um, any plans for molds for smaller knobs like jewelry boxes. Um, what I would do is, um, okay, how do I say it? So regular molds such as, I don't have any handy, they're all over there somewhere. There's some. Let's just say you want to make a jewelry box mold. Let's just pretend like this is smaller than it really is. You can get um, your regular jewelry, ro jewelry box hardware, right? Preferably something flat on top. You can get those on Amazon all day long. Just the plain ones are super cheap, like 50 for $6 or something. Get you those or the wooden ones, and you can cast your own molds out of whatever your little heart desires. Um, we're going to pretend these are tiny. And then you, you can attach that to the existing pull, the cheap Amazon plain one and you can use um, whatever your favorite really good glue is. Um, I use a cryon and acyl. It's like super glue. Super glue to the max. Um, <clears throat> but you can you can do that and make your own knob out of anything. Because <laughs> some jewelry boxes it might be a little big for the stands, the armors, they might work for that because they have the doors and they're about this this tall and stuff like that. So you might be able to get away with these on some of those bigger ones, but the little small tabletop ones, maybe that's a, another way that you can make your own and be creative that way because it might be a little big for the whole thing, you know. But anyways, this one, um, I cast it last night. I used clear resin, two-part epoxy, I mean, because um, I was out of the quick setting resin, you know. It goes really quickly around here. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I used that last night, and I ended up trying to color it with some of the um, metallic, or actually this one is Sparks, but I used the metallic Opal Magic paints from Finnebear Line um, to do this, and one of them was old, and I put I should have just thrown it in the trash, but I used it anyway, so now it's got flecks in it of the pink Opal Magic, which is not terrible. It's kind of neat, right? It's kind of neat that um, that happened. But see the back here, how it's, uh-oh. <clears throat> Are we here? Are we here, Facebook? Apparently we have a bad, bad connection, but we sure don't on uh, YouTube. So I wanna show you something. So I'm gonna uh, point you down here real quick. Okay, so let's see. And then we got YouTube down here, maybe. Well, YouTube, you might have to use your imagination. Can you see that? <clears throat> yeah, you can see that now. Okay, so see how, you know, it's got a little bit of these little buggers on around the edge from casting it. You can just take, you know, sometimes you can take your fingernail and pull them off. That's not always smooth and like nice and neat. Um, you can also use a knife or some sewing scissors or something. I like to take a sandpaper and I just kind of just lightly, I lightly just sand those edges off smooth. Some are easier than others to do, but this one's not so bad. Okay, so on the other ones that I've done, the other examples that I've created for these knobs, this is a little rough of a sandpaper grip, but that's all I had is within arm's reach. So then <clears throat> that will sit right on the base of your project there. See? So let's see. Mm, I don't think I should do the last design either, did I? This one's called, um, did I? Gosh. This one is called uh, da, 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 Imperial Pearl. I don't think I showed you this one. It's just like the last one I did show you, but it's hexagonal. Is that a word? Hexagonal? Hexagonal? I don't know how you say it. Anyways, I love this one. Okay, so that, speak of the devil. So what I did here, I think I might have showed you earlier, was I, I cast this whole thing in clear resin. Okay, or I'm sorry, clear epoxy. Let it set up. And I had mixed in my glitter with that. That's just glitter. That's not any additive like color. Um, usually when I want to color them, I add just a tiny bit of paint or mica powders. Um, we got some mica powders coming out today as well. Where are they? I know I brought them out here. Maybe not. Well, there's some glow-in-the-dark mica powders, and then there's another set. It's called Bubblegum of the Redesign with Premium Mica Powders. So I really thought I brought them over here. Apparently I did not. But in any case, add whatever you want to your clear two-part epoxy to make it all pretty, right? I was trying to simulate kind of like a, an a opal or jade or some sort of semi-precious stone. Um, and then after it's set up, I went around it with the gold leaf 
And then I had sealed the top because otherwise it's not shiny. See how it's not shiny? It's kind of matte. What you want to do is you want to take a clear sealer or um, a clear pour of epoxy over the top of that once you're done putting all your pretties on it, and then that will make it shiny. You could buff it too, but that's just way more work than I think it's worth, honestly. Um, but not pretty. They're pretty good size. They're one and a quarter. Okay, they're all one and a quarter um, diameter. So they're a nice size for, you know, your drawers and things like that. Another use for these would be if you're not working on a furniture piece, but you like casting molds and things like that and the fun of the decorating them. Um, I used to have a class where I had a plank of wood and they would decorate that, paint it, transfers if they wanted, and then um, use molds uh, or knobs, I'm sorry, knobs or hooks or whatever as hangers. So I would put four or five of these across your board and then you could hang it on the wall and people have a little coat rack or my kids they have a book book bag rack you know to hang their book bags on which they don't use but it's still cute um, but that's another use for knobs which is pretty neat because they're not just they're not just knobs okay so w w with this cast I'm gonna go ahead and show you peel the other ones off and then there's one more um, product from the new release that is happening today that I, that I want to show you okay there's several um, there's several items that are part of my designer line, um, and even that, it's quite, it's quite a good amount to show on one video, but let's see how long have we been on. I might, I might be able to show you a couple more if we have some time. 37 minutes, 38 minutes, okay. So this one also, um, I colored the clear epoxy on this one with um, some sparks paint, the me uh, metallic sparks, or no, not metallic, Art Alchemy sparks from, these are also from the Finnebear line. Um, I just put a little bit of in my in my thing here, and um, what else did I throw in there? There's like flakes of something in there. I don't know if I did that on purpose or not. <laughs> I don't think I threw that. Oh, that was leftover flex from the dried up one I tried to use. So it's kind of neat, actually, if if, if you look at it. it it's kind of terrazzo tile looking. So it was an accident, but a happy one. So I want to show you real quick how I did this on these um, with the with the leaf, because that's a lot of fun. I mean, I had so much fun doing this. It's, um, it's kind of like not even fair. I'll show you that real quick. So I peel this guy out somewhat gently. So that's kind of neat, right? Um, on some of the other ones, I even added jewels. So these little rhinestone things, these are pearls, but you, can, you get what I mean. Rhinestones and rhinestones and pearls. Right, we're gonna adjust Prince's song to fit our needs. So this on top is some Art Alchemy and Opal Magic paints. They just kind of layered them on there. So it looks kind of holographic, almost space-like, right? Then I went around the perimeter with some, um, some neat looking rhinestones that kind of matched my feel that I was going for. That's a nice beefy mold, I mean, knob. Like, look at that. It's like substantial. It's got a nice, it's got a nice feel to it when you cast it in resin. It's nice and heavy. It doesn't feel um, wonky or anything that like it's gonna fly away. This one I kind of did a little extra on. I took some rhinestones, and I just made a little moon kind of shape. That's a little more funky. But also put um, on the top. I put some holographic. Believe it or not, I use um, gel, like the kind that you get at the at the nail place. <laughs> I use gel on some of them to kind of test that out. And once you cure it under the UV light, it works perfectly. I think I actually put holographic on this one of the gel and nail stuff. So far, so good. Um, but you can see, let's see, on some of them you can see, oh, this one's my favorite. So this is one that I did not put anything around the edge. All I did was cast it like, you're, like we did here, or like I'm showing you in the clear, and then I gold leafed around the edge and the sides. Okay, so. It was, it's clear resin with a little bit of glitter in it, so it's kind of luminous, right? It's got a little bit of a glow to it in the light because it's like an opal-colored uh, glitter. It's a hand-cut glitter. So they're chunky, they're small chunks. There's all the different sizes of glitter in there, of the opal glitter, just in clear epoxy. And then I'm going to show you real quick how we um, leaf the edges and all around it. So you can do that with leafing, but I also really want to show you, and I'll do this before the leafing. I want to show you another product from um, the release today. This is one of the cooler projects, in my opinion. Like, it's just something that's just so fun, and I can't stop finding things to use it on. Okay, this is my gilding marker, okay? Not everybody likes to get their hands all 
sparkly from applying decor wax. I used to only use my fingers to apply gilding waxes or decor waxes to my projects because I didn't mind my fingers being all gold or silver or whatever. After a while though, um, <laughs> after a while of starting to find gold on everything around the house and then having to do this or that and getting gold on my steering wheel or my computer, I was just like, okay, this is too much. So I started using a brush and I like using a brush, but at the same time, I don't get as much control with the brush as I do with my, with my, um, with my fingers for applying the gilding wax. And I, I like to be in control, okay? Like I don't want to feel like it's not turning out the way I want because you know I can't grasp the application and do it the way I want. So I thought I always thought like wouldn't that be cool if there was like a crayon or something like that or um, some sort of just like a pencil that you could use to apply it, you know, like you would be drawing or whatever. And so I had the idea, well, why don't we do a gilding marker? Because not everybody wants to get their fingers messy and that's hard. I mean, it's oil based. That gilding wax, that decor wax, it's, uh, it's potent, you know? And um, also I noticed that when, some of the time when I'm um, putting, you know, gold detail on something, I can just use my hand or brush or whatever and swipe it over and it looks great. Like just a simple swipe. It depends on how deep and intricate the detailing is that I'm trying to work with. So like the edge, like a beveled edge or something like that, I just swipe it, no big deal. But there's some certain types of carvings and molds and things like that that it's so hard to get them right and they look sloppy and you don't want sloppy for that particular piece or that look or design. You want something nice and, you know, clean and, um, classy looking or whatever, you know, you're not going for this grunge or whatever look. So um, that's where this really comes in handy because you can be precise. You can be very precise with where you're gilding and you can use this in any kind of instance that you would use decor wax or gilding wax. Um, so let's just say Lux Ornate has, oh, there goes my internet again on Facebook. Get your act together, Facebook. Okay, so see the little um, details around the edge? Kind of looks like a little UFO this way, doesn't it? A little flying saucer, but it's not, it's way cuter. So <clears throat> for your gilding marker, you wanna give it a shake. There's a name for this kind of marker and I cannot remember what it is. It's like, it's something about pushing something, but in order to activate it, because when it comes, this will be white, it won't be already, um, the tip will not be soaked. And it is a chisel tip. The reason why I wanted a chisel tip is because it's got that flat, broad area that you can get a wide stroke or you can turn it around and you can use the pointy area and get a more precise, smaller stroke. So you got large and, and small points or tips there with a, with a chisel. So you wanna shake it up and then it'll be white. It won't be full of product yet. And you just give it a, a few um, depresses onto something you don't care about or don't wanna keep. Like, okay, that's not the greatest example. Let's just say this little thing here. Okay, just press it a couple times. Okay, give it a minute, maybe keep shaking it. And then eventually the tip will turn gold and that's when you're ready to go. That's when it's loaded up and ready to go. And you wanna be careful about, you know, you don't wanna press it and hold it down too long because then all the product will spill out. So you just just a couple depresses quickly and um, let it fly. So how am I gonna show both you guys at the same time? Let's move you over here, YouTube. All right, scoot on over. We're gonna have story time. I put up this makeshift um, wall in my kitchen to take pictures and I'm kind of digging it. It's working, except when, when it pans over and you can see all my like dirty dishes and stuff. That's not so cute, <laughs> but it works for now. So here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna just lightly, with our flat side of the tip, we're just gonna lightly go over our details. It's hard to do it and show you guys at the same time because, you know, I can't see if it's facing you. <laughs> so let's see, is that better? That's better. So you just wanna kind of take the flat side and you can just swipe it all over the tops of your details there. See how it's, it's just keeping on the tops because I'm using the flat side. Can you see it like that? See that? Shoop, shoop. And if you just kind of hold it at an angle a little bit to your surface, that's how you can get that flat side to really just touch the tops, which when you're adding gilding wax or leafing or any of those types of things to make your um, project bling bling, generally you just wanna hit the tops because that's where we would see highlights, right? And then that leaves the um, carving or the depressed area or the, um, the lower parts of the carvings, that leaves them as shadows and that's why we say it makes the details pop because then you have that contrast, okay? 
the, the purple down in there and then the bright shiny gold on top. That's the contrast we're looking for to make these pop. Right? Popping is good. Pop on in and make you a knob. Oh, this is so addicting. I can't even with this. I suppose you could just color the whole thing if you really wanted to, but I'm just going to do the deets and maybe the side a little bit. I, when I was a kid, I mean, I, I loved coloring, like who doesn't, right? But like, I really loved it so much to where I, you know how that coloring for adults in the, you know, adult coloring books and all that was a trend for a while. Um, yeah, that was one of my favorite trends and I did that for a long time, but you know, this thing called work that you gotta do sometimes, that happens, so. Had to give up the coloring so that I could, you know, work. All right, and I'm just going around the edge and honestly, I'm done, but I'm just making it pretty because I can't stop. This thing is so fun. Okay, look at that. But you wanna put the cap on when you're done cause it will, uh, you don't wanna let it sit there and dry up, but <clears throat> isn't that fun? I know it is. It sure is. You want you some, don't you? That looks like a lot of fun, too much fun. <clears throat> let's, let's do this one real quick and then I might be able to show you. Mm. Oh yeah, I got time. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong time. <clears throat> I was looking at the wrong time on the screen. So yeah, we got time to show you some other stuff. So uh, Facebook keeps trying to reconnect. That's funny. Are you that? Are you back? Sorry, I, I, I don't know why it keeps cutting out. That's not typical for videos. I mean, typical for me to experience issues with everything, but not usually with my internet, so. Can you see how I'm just going around the edge? I was gonna show you the gold leaf, but this is way more fun. And if you're not a person that trusts yourself with bring, being precise, like see how I got a little bit on the top of that thing there. If you're not a person that trusts yourself being precise, you can always tape it off or they make masking fluid. Um, like even if you're using paint or whatever you're using to do the edges, um, they make masking fluid, which I have some somewhere but you just paint it on where you want to not get paint, like painter's tape. So you use it as you would painter's tape, but it's a fluid, so you can get in these little tiny weird spots and crevices and things like that. Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever really used it on any of my projects, but I've had it just in case, and I think about using it. <clears throat> so I think, I think these markers have a lot of life in it. I have not used one to completion yet or to empty, but, um, I used one quite a bit the other day and it started to get a little bit like tired on me. It was like I had to go over some spots a few times. I was like, geez, you, I'll give you a rest. So I did, came back to use it later and it had, you know, kind of re, <laughs> it had life again. So I think it was just, you know, open too long and that's fine if that happens. Really, all you gotta do is put the cap on, give it a couple presses and let it set for a second. But I haven't really found that to be an issue. I just, it, if it happens, then you just, Shake it, don't break it, press it, don't mess it, and then you're good to go. Look at that. I may not go around the sides of this one. I might just kind of leave it around the, the top. That's kind of neat. You could use your uh, metallic paints, or you could use, um, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Like, you could make any kind of knob you want. Like, you could make one with your face on it, if you use clear, you know, epoxy or similar like a sticker situation and sealed it. Got face knobs, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah, these are just my face knobs for my face dresser. It's an ode to myself. I'm not really doing that, but check it out. <clears throat> Isn't that cool? It's so fun, right? Like, you can't wait to have all the fun. Okay, so this one, that one I did little pearls on. Little um, flat back pearls, right? And I don't know if I should do this one. This one I have not yet did the gold leaf around. And since, what's, what are we at, 29 minutes? We could probably do that real quick if I have my glue. Heck yeah, let's just do that real quick. Because what else is fun? Gold leafing. Always. We'll do that real quick while I talk about the next item that I want to show you. So the next, there's about, I don't know, six or so more products in the line that I have not showed you today. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and or I'm sorry, as part of my line. There's more in the redesign with Primo release itself, like the whole line. But 
I'm talking about my line right now, okay? And there's like six or seven more, and I'm excited to show you, but I'm trying to give each its moment, so um, I'll just explain those to you while we apply our gilding size or leafing glue. You, you want a more precise, smaller brush. I like a little angled, like quarter inch angled guy myself for something this small. And then gilding glue, you can get that from Redesign with Prima. Gilding glue. I usually just squirt some into my, um, <clears throat> into an old cap from a uh, transfer tube, but I don't have one right now. So I'll just do it onto this cardboard. Um, ooh, that was kind of a lot. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go around the edge where I want to apply my gold leaf. So the next items I wanna show you, which um, you could also use on here, are the glazes. So we've got three new glazes and I'm really excited about those because they're not, they're not your typical glaze exactly. I mean, you know, a glaze is a glaze is a glaze, right? Not really, but a lot of people would probably assume that. I don't know about you, but I've used glazes that are so weak sauce that I'm just, it's disappointing, you know? Like when I use a glaze, cause I want some, some age or some shadows or some, some details to pop, I want them to pop. I don't want people to be like, oh, that's pretty. Like, what did you, is it dirty? Did you need to clean it? No, I want them to, to be dramatic. I like my pieces to be dramatic, especially if there's some beautiful carvings or things that I want to accentuate. And that's where the glaze comes into play. So there's three colors, like I said. There's one called Filter Noir, which is intense black. It's, it's intense. I'm telling you, it's a very black, black glaze. Um, good for like a um, shadows, a very um, moody type look, if you would like. If not, um, any of these the glazes, you can kind of dumb them down with some water. If you want, you can mist the water on it while you're working with them, and that will dilute it just a bit to where it's not so... Um, in your face. You know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll give you a less dramatic or less intense look. And that's okay because not everybody wants intense, you know, thing, shadows and things like that. Some people like subtle. And you can get that with this. You just want to mist it with water while you're working with it, which brings me to the point that glazes, they dry pretty quickly. So you want to work in small sections at a time regardless, but um, especially if you're trying to, you know, mist it with water to dilute it just a bit then you definitely want to work in, in really small sections. Because um, it's potent, which is what I love about any glaze. That's what I look for in a glaze is, is it, is, are the effects or the, is the end result um, dramatic enough for me? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, and that make, makes or break whether I like that or not. A lot of the glazes I've used in the past, besides um, one brand, um, I've had to add my own paint to to doctor it up to make it get the dramatic results that I want or to to have an impact on my piece. And so those are the kind I kind of tend to stay away from. But for a long time, you know, out of all the glazes I ever used, that was our only option in the furniture and DIY world. There was not really any glazes that packed a punch without doctoring them up. At least that I had used, you know, things that I had come across, which was a lot of them. Um, I really liked the last spring's glaze that I used. It was about as good as it got for me. Um, but you know me, more is always, what I'm looking for, I'm always looking for more, 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 right? So more darker, more potent, more bang for your buck, and more um, effectiveness. So I will show you those glazes in just a second. I'm almost done going around the edge of my knob here with my um, gilding glue from Redesign. And I can use a bigger brush for that if I want now. I just had to use a little one to get in those little details in the beadwork around the edge. Um, <clears throat> side note. For like um, glazes, I'm not glazes, gilding glue, glue, gilding wax, decor wax, all of those things that are um, not so easy to clean out of your brushes. Because I hate cleaning brushes. Like I hate cleaning my brushes, but I do it. But some things are more difficult than others. Like decor wax, because it's oil based. They're a little, it's a little harder to get out of brushes. Am I right? So I buy these from Amazon. They're like. 60 packs and up you can get like 100 packs 200 packs 60 pack for like seven dollars and i just pitch them if i can't get them clean or i just pitch them because <laughs> i don't want to try to get them clean so anyways i'm gonna let that dry for just a sec so got our gilding glue on there almost you don't need a super thick layer just a thin layer will work but 
you want to make sure you get the whole thing. I missed a spot or three. Anyways, I'm going to let that um, dry to attack so it, it doesn't take very long at all. You want to let it dry to attack because if you don't, it'll still be wet. And then when you're putting on your leaf, it'll just stick to your brush and then it'll look all cloudy and gooey. It won't be nice and shiny and chromey looking. Um, We'll just let that sit there and dry for a sec to attack while I show you the glazes real quick. Oh, Facebook and your issues. Jeez. I got fiber internet, people. Like, that should not be happening. Looks like somebody's getting a call to their manager. AT&T, if that is your real name. All right, so we've got three glaze colors. Woohoo! Mm. So this one, mint condition. I'll show you that. I'll, I'll tell you about that one first. Mint condition is like a, it's almost like a patina product. It's got a matte greenish finish, which I can show you. <clears throat> and drop my bottle of glaze. So it's, can you see that very well? It gives it like a very copper penny oxidation type look, like a, like you would find on a, tin, a copper roof or something like that. It's, it's almost got like a very matte powdery feel. I don't know if that makes sense. So it's almost more like a lime wash than a glaze, but technically it is a glaze. Um, it's got that matte feel to it. So it really looks like an oxidation or a patina on, on metal. It's pretty neat. Um, I love that. Um, I'm using it on another piece that I will be able to show you at some point in a couple days. Soon. Soon. That's my answer. We'll see you soon. And then... Um, to go oh I dropped it so it's like a minty color as you can expect <clears throat> so what you do is you just paint it on and I'm fairly generous with it because I like to make sure it gets down in all those deets getting it in the details is the most important part of using a glaze because that's where it hides and lives in and as you wipe away the excess and you see that glaze down in the details that's what gives you the effect that you're going for okay that contrast that um, contrast between the tops of the details and then down in there in the little crevasses. I was trying to show you better, but like the consistency. The consistency is almost like a chalk paste, but not as thick. So if you were to water down a chalk paste or beef up a chalky type paint a lot, that's kind of what you would have, okay? It's almost like a pudding. It's like a pudding consistency. Well, thin pudding, not a very thick pudding, but. So like I said, you can always um, miss some water from a water bottle on it on your piece if it's drying too quickly on you and you're not working fast enough or you just want to, you know, perfect. Um, you can uh, mist it with water or, you know, Floetrol or something like that to, to slow down the drying process if you want to have more time while it's open, um, while it's working. So the next one is, this is mesmerizing. It's Tiger Eye. Tiger's Eye Glaze. Um, okay, so if you're familiar with the semi-precious stone Tiger Eye, it looks just like this. It's kind of like a black stone with all these um, bronze colored glittery effect or flex in it, you know. Um, so this was named after Tiger Eye or that was the inspiration. Tiger Eye, um, it's actually a real stone in nature, but this is not its glaze, we make this. And so similar to its namesake, it is, it's like a very dark overall kind of, um, sort of look, but it's got the flex of this bronze color, like almost like a glitter, but it's so sparkly. It's a, it's potent. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that about the, the black one or the, the mint one's not dark. It's potent. They're all potent. A little goes a long way. So and that's so pretty. Um, for me, I love gold. I've always been a fan of gold. Okay, not always. My adult life, I've been a fan of gold and on my furniture, it's my go-to, right? Like even when I'm thinking, ooh, that would look good with silver instead. I usually almost always go with gold because that's more satisfying for me to use. But lately I've been having a thing for bronze or um, like darker, almost like a vintage gold, but darker. So bronze or um, what's the other one? Brass, like a dark brass. I've been really into that lately. Um, I don't know why. Maybe I, I'm getting more refined with my older age and I, I'm liking the more subdued type of gold. I don't know, I just, it's different and I like it. Isn't that pretty? It is, it is. Okay, and the last but not least is, this one is called Filter Noir. It's a black glaze, but it's not just any old black glaze. It's really, really dark, like it's very potent. 
And I like that because when I'm going for moody, I'm going for moody. Um, I'm not going for anything else. So it will give you that. It will give you moody. And the reason why I named it Filter Noir is because it reminds me of all the glazes. When I glaze a piece, it's hard to explain um, to someone who isn't familiar or doesn't use a lot of glazes. It's almost like a filter on you know your photos or your whatever people, Snapchat or I don't know what other apps have filters for your face. Um, it's almost like that. You know how like you take a picture and then you put the filter on and it's like, okay, that looks way better. Um, it's sort of like this. It's like you like your piece, you like where you're going with it. It's not terrible, it's, but it, there's just something that it needs to give it that finishing touch and make it all just, just go together and look, look great. Similar to like, you know, foundation or powder or whatever you put on, at, you know, when you're doing your makeup. It just glazes over all of the imperfections, I guess I should say, but I mean, it's not exactly accurate, but it marries the whole look. Okay, so say you got, you know, two different colors of this and that going on and you got two different stenciling types and transfers and you go over it with a glaze and it just brings the whole thing together. It just marries all of that and it makes it look cohesive and like it belongs together. It's like a filter in real life. So that's why I named it Filter Noir, but to me that's what glazes do. They just bring it all together and they make it work, people. Make it work. Do you like my reference? Do you know my reference? Designers, make it work designers. Tim Gunn. Anyways, <laughs> um, so those are the glazes and I'll, sh I'll demonstrate those on a different video at some point soon. But um, I wanted to show you the knob molds because there's so many possibilities with those, they're so fun. We're gonna throw some leaf on this real quick and I'm gonna head out. Um, there are some more products that I will be you know, posting later today. And hopefully um, I'll be able to do thorough videos on all of them because they're fun, and you need to know all the possibilities, okay? And if you don't know, I'm gonna show ya. Ooh, what kind of different leaves could we do? We got blue, green, let's just do silver. We're gonna do silver, okay? We'll do like a Elsa Ice Princess knob. So I got my silver, ooh, and there's blue. Somebody knew. That was a hint. All right, so I got my little piece of gold leaf, right? This is so easy and it's so freaking fun right now. I'm not even gonna lie. This is like one of my favorite things to do. I'm just gonna lay it on there, right? And see how it just kind of floats on there and you just wanna... You don't have to try to keep your piece in one continuous piece, but some people like to like not rip it as much as they can. I don't really care about that, but um, it's just so fun, right? How it just kind of floaties on there. Then you can grab like a stiffer brush, like one of these guys, right? <clears throat> and you can kind of just make sure that as you pat it on there to stick in all the places that it's covering everything that you want gilded or what's, what is gilded for silver? Cause gilded means to make gold, right? To turn gold. But what is silver? What do they call that? Does anybody know? I don't, it's not a trick question. I really just don't know. Because gilding, I think, is specific to gold. Maybe we should coin a new phrase like... Silded. <laughs> leafed. We, we leafed this. So once you get it, you know, on all your surfaces, then you can just kind of get a little firmer with your um, brush and make sure you pat it down in all the places. Okay, you want to pat it down in all the places. I just like to kind of go at it with the... Um, stippling type type motion. Oh, there's a spot I missed. Okay, once you're sure it's down in all the places, then um, sometimes I take a different brush, and sometimes I use the same brush. It depends on what it is. I'm gonna use a different one for this. But then you can just kind of brush away all your excess. Okay. You can do it more gently if you want. I just I'm trying to, for the sake of time, make it snappy. Oh, I missed some spots, so I could just go back over those with a little bit of glue and touch them up, but no big deal. So you just want to get your excess off. Um, I will be having my vacuum cleaner right next to me every time I do this, so as soon as I shut this video off, I can get up all these little pieces that drive me nuts. Yeah, leafing and OCD are not the most greatest combination for a person, but that's why we have dust busters, right? Dust buster, all the things. So... 
I got all the excess off. I can see a few spots that I missed down here just because I was trying to, you know, hurry for the essence of saving time, but I mean, it's still simple, right? Like that took, what, two seconds? And it's so pretty. Then I would take some sort of like a sealer or whatever your favorite, you know, triple thick, something like that. Pour it, spray it, brush it over, you know, the whole thing. Um, and you'll get a nice shine right there. It'll look like an opal. Little shiny opal for your um, furniture needs. What do you think? Cool stuff? I think so. So um, that's fun, right? So there, I'll show you the, that one. I got this little box at, at Michael's, the craft store, Michael's. Aren't they fun? You could put feet on these, make a little, little uh, trinket box or put knobs on it that you make to show them off. Lots of, lots of possibilities. It doesn't seem like there'd be a whole lot of things to do with just knobs, you know, right? But there is, you know, towel rack, coat rack, all the things, a top for like a jar, you know, like a mason jar or a ceramic jar that you want to put a pretty top on or I've done them on wine bottles. I put a cork on the end and I made a wine bottle stopper. I could go on for days, you guys. Follow me for more tips. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for hanging out. Let me show you all the things. Well, not all the things, but fun things. And um, yeah, I'm excited. This is gonna be pretty pretty cool to see what people can do with the, the marker and um, the molds. And I'm always blown away by the things that I see and the imagination that people have. And, um, you know, cause you think, oh, well, people are going to make this and this and this, but then you see what they make in real life. And it's like, I never thought of that. Oh, that's cool. It's a feeling that can't really be, um, tops. So that's a cool feeling. So, um, anyways, I hope you have a great day and I hope you see some cool stuff that you like from the re entire release and I will chat at you next time. So we're going to say later on alligator to YouTube, if we can figure out how here. Bye-bye YouTube. Yes, 